Good. So the title of the message of Sabbath is Discerning Christ in All His Members. And the first verse, please turn to Romans chapter 8, verse 28 to 29. Romans chapter 8, verse 28 to 29. Romans 8, verse 28 to 29. Let me know when you're there. Amen. Well, there. So Romans chapter 8 and verses 28 to 29 says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose, for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. So here we see that, Number one, all things work together for the good of those who love God and who are the called according to his purpose. So we see here, number one, we see that, well, as you all know, the Bible says that many are called, but few are chosen. So here, all things work together for the good of those who are called according to his purposes, which means that we're all, we're all called. God has a destiny for all of us, but and many blessings will come in your life just by being saved and everything and by growing, you know. But God is saying that when we're actually actively um, walking in God's purposes for our lives, that no matter what happens, happens for our good, even if it's like chaotic at times, even if we don't understand why would God allow this, you know, because he didn't allow it in the past, why, did, why would he allow this or, or whatever it may be. When you're actually... Um, serving God according to what you're called to serve him, or even serving God, you know, by faith in something you know is not quite your destiny yet, but, you know, on the road of like, you know, actually getting to the main focus of what you're called to do. God says that pretty much when you're serving him, and especially when you're actually like, you know, serving him with a mindset that like, I'm seeking God, even if I don't know yet, I'm seeking God and serving him, knowing that by doing that, He's preparing me to actually reveal to me my destiny, and and when I know, I will for sure walk in it. So God is saying that for such a person, He's saying anything that works, um, anything that happens in your life will work for your good. So, for example, like you know what happened to this ministry last year, um, it seemed very terrible and everything. But through that, because because we we were all working uh, for God's purposes, through that. You know, now what happened is that, you know, even the enemy used, you know, uh, a person to bring division. What happened through that is that God still, you know, got us out of a comfort zone to the point that, like, now, for example, Jacinth, which was, like, very reserved, is now worshiping, you know, and which is a miracle. That as a pastor, I can see that it's a huge, <laughs> huge step forward. And so basically, like like, we're seeing that even now, it caused us to just take on more a little bit, but at the same time, even us discover giftings and talents and things we actually enjoy. So God allowed all that to happen because he knew that he would, he would like, at least for the worship team, he would actually get our feet wet in like, you know, kind of like what it involves. And we all retained something uh, from that, that, okay, like actually have a, a desire and a, and a love for that. And I'm going to, play my instrument, I'm going to worship and whatever. And then people are testifying that they're getting blessed. So uh, this is like a major example on how like if you're actually working for God's purposes, it doesn't matter what happens positive, which obviously is for your, for the good. But even negative, if God allows it to happen when you, you know yourself that, you know, you were not backslidden, you're actually pursuing God. If anything bad that happens, the reason why the Bible says rejoice is because God knows that 
as long as you're walking the, the path of your of that he has for you, no matter what bad thing will happen, will actually result in the future if you trust him and praise him through the the trial. In the future, you'll see that whoa, actually this this and this and this and this like actually wouldn't have happened if that didn't happen. See what I mean? So that's a perfect example of that. And it also says, let's just read it again quickly, 28 to 29. So, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. And the Bible says, you know, if you love me, obey my commandments. So it's obviously talking about a person who's actually following God. So, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. So here we see that God, you know, we all know that, that Jesus is our Savior, the son, the son of God. But here the Bible says that, you know, part of God's purpose is to have many sons of whom Jesus, Jesus is the, like, like the, the firstborn son. So basically we see here that it's actually part of God's plan for him to have many children, which means that part of that plan, he, he says, he wants to conform us to the image of Jesus, meaning that, you know, we need to be Christ-like to actually, you know, manifest as children of, children of God. So we see that two, uh, a major important thing, God desires to have many children in his likeness. Just like when he made Adam and Eve, the Bible says, God created men in his own image and likeness, uh, male and female, he created them. So both male and female are after the image of God. And so we see here that, okay, God has a son, but God actually wants more children. And that's why he saved us because in his plan, even before Adam and Eve fell, in his plan, first of all, if you read the genealogy of, of, uh, of Jesus going back all the way to Adam, you know, it says, and Adam, the son of God, just like he says, Jesus, the son of God, when he goes back all the way to the end, you know, it's like, for example, he goes like Jess, uh, David, the son of Jesse, Jesse, son of like, and it just goes one by one by one till the very beginning. Then he goes and Adam, the son of God, in the same way that he says that Jesus is the son of God. And the Bible even called Jesus the, the second Adam, which means that originally God, when he created Adam, he was already uh, giving, giving himself an extra son. And he wanted a multitude of sons and daughters through that bloodline. So we need to understand, to better understand God's plan, we need to understand that, yes, Christ is the Son of God, the only begotten Son of the Father. But part of God's plan is to make you and me and every other believer additional sons and daughters. And we, and we, we know that, but we never really uh, realize that God wants many children. Okay? So... And the reason for that is because God's kingdom, um, God's purpose, part of his purpose is to forever expand his kingdom, okay? And that is even why uh, space is expanding all the time because one day God will enter uh, this physical universe. And, and the Bible says in, I, in Isaiah, it says, and of, the, and of uh, the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. So literally, uh, when God returns for the new Jerusalem, like all the way at, at the end, like the, he he will not stop creating, okay? God is a creator. He's not, he's not going to stop creating, but but he's going to establish us as you know um, kings and and queens and lords under the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. That's why it's called King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Is is us that is now molding into his image, so that when he returns, we he can he can assign us uh, rulership in different areas and everything and. And then when the Father returns to, to, to this universe, he makes everything new. He says the heavens and the earth will be made brand new. And then God will keep creating. We don't know what he'll do exactly, so I'm not going to talk about that. But before, but before this, like, you know, further creating, God will make sure that we are in place to help him rule this, eternal, this eternally expanding kingdom. So, any questions so far? So all things work for good to Christians who actually seek God's will and serve him in humble obedience. So it's not up to us to tell God, like, that's what I'm going to do for you. We've got to make sure that we, we seek God for what he wants us to do for him. Um, so let's turn to Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 to 24. 
Galatians 5, verses 22 to 24. So Galatians 5, verse 22 to 24 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. So pretty much here we see those are the fruits, the fruit of the Spirit. But in connection with what we just read, um, tying it to the purpose of God, the way that, see, that God wants to see Jesus in all of us, okay? And the way we do that, <laughs> you know, I mean, there's been many wonderful movies made about Jesus and everything, but the only way we truly know how he was is, you know, the, the, the movies show well what he did, yes? But the only way we could really know how he was um, as a person is by looking at the fruits of the Spirit. Because the Holy Ghost is the Spirit of Christ Himself and of the Father, and the in this by by looking at the fruits of the Spirit, and looking at yourself, and comparing you know your character to the to what the the Bible says are the fruits of the Spirit. That's how you measure yourself. To are, am I growing? Like is Christ manifesting more and more in me, or I'm actually like regressing? And and so. Take a good note of the fruit of the Spirit and, and keep the scriptures central to your to your whole walk with Christ because from by, by looking at those fruits, you can always see, okay, like, am I having less peace in my life? Is my joy decreasing? You know, um, is, is my faith kind of like not as strong as before? And if, if, if it's the case, you know that something, you're actually regressing. You're not, like, you, you, you didn't just not grow. You're actually going backwards. So the way that we know if we are allowing Christ to shine through us, is by measuring ourselves with the fruits of the Spirit. So again, uh, it says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love. So is your love growing for people or is your love growing cold? That's a very important question because the Bible says in the, in the, in the end times, the love of many will grow cold, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. So, you know, a way, if your love is growing cold, the Bible links it directly, like, you know, you should seek God. If, you, if your love is going cold, seek God and say, God, whatever wrong thing I believe, whatever spirit of seduction may be in my life, expose it and, 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 and cast it out and just show me the truth. Because Christ directly linked to love growing cold, to false teachings and seducing spirits and, and evil doctrines. So, and again, so... But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy. Joy is very important. Like the Bible says, the joy of the Lord is our strength. So if your joy is increasing, you know that you're actually getting stronger in the Spirit. If your joy is decreasing, you know, just worship more. The Bible directly links worship to joy. Like it, it says, um, the Bible says that God will give us the, the spirit of, um, of joy instead of heaviness. And, and sorry, the garment of praise instead of heaviness. So heaviness is to do with like, you know, sadness, depression, stuff. So the Bible says the garment of praise, which is like whenever whenever we, we worship, we can't see it in the natural, but in a spiritual realm, we actually change clothes. Like we change our clothing to worship God. And the garment of praise is a garment that has jewels in it to like reflect the glory of God when we, when we appear before him in worship. So the, and just by wearing that garment, you actually feel more joy because the garment, the, the light of God goes in, in the jewels and they retain the light. And then the, because the, the light of God is in the jewels, when you put the garment on, you just feel so free and happy because the life of God is like within the jewels that it retains it. So a way that you can boost your joy, if you feel like your joy is low and everything, then right away, don't just say like, oh, I'm attacked. No, no. Like, well, yeah, you're attacked or whatever, but worship God. Because see, God, the Bible says, he's molding us in the image of Jesus. 
So that's how you know what Jesus was like. See, it says, um, but the fruit of the Spirit is love. So we know he was very loving. We know he was a very jo joyful person. It says peace. We know that, you know, there was peace around him. Long-suffering. We know that he had, he had, he had a lot of patience um, under, the, under temptation and trials. Gentleness. We know that he was a very gentle person. He wasn't all rough and, like, trying to be tough. He was a very gentle person. It says... Um, uh, goodness, you know, he was he was a good man. He says faith. He was full of faith. Meekness, you know, he was he was he was soft. Uh, temperance, you know, so he was you know he was hard to get him. But the Bible says God is slow to anger, so he, he had self control. And the Bible says against such there is no law. So the Bible is really saying, you know, against the character of Jesus there is no law because why would God put a law against Himself when He's perfection? So if you ever wonder what Christ is like, again, just look at the fruits of the Spirit and then, you know, look at, at each of them in your life. Because that's how you know if you're growing, by looking at the fruits in you. Because I tell you right now, by disobeying God, you'll, you'll feel a decrease of the fruits. It's impossible to disobey God and have an increase of the fruits. It's impossible. So, so walk with the Lord, read your Bible. By reading the Bible and by applying what you read, that is how you generally like boost up all the fruits so we all have the fruits at different levels every individual of us and every person in the body of christ we all have those fruits at, at different levels okay but understand that the most basic way and simple way to actually raise all of them steadily consistently is by reading the bible every day and by applying what you read by just doing that your the fruits will all increase and of course, by doing uh, going the extra mile, you know you can boost the fruits higher, quicker. But the, but the main thing is if if you don't read the Bible, okay. Even Jesus said in John, he said, "And these words I have spoken unto you, that that um, that my joy might be in you, and that your joy may be full." Which directly he he already said, if you don't read the Bible, your joy will decrease. Already, right there, we know that not reading the Bible will impede and and decrease the fruit of joy. So again, and, and God also told me a long time ago, I think I shared with you guys, I don't know if you're still around. God told me to tell people who never, who never saw God's face yet, that God said his invisible face is, he said every fruit of the spirit is like, um, what was the word? He said every fruit of the spirit is like a feature of his face. So, so he said, if you've never seen God's face in a vision or encounter, whatever, he says the, the fruit of the spirit is 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 a feature of his invisible face, which means by me seeing the fruit of the spirit in Pascal or Jacinthe or any of you, so so whenever the joy of the Lord is beaming through any one of you, I'm seeing a, a, a feature of God's face. I don't need to. That's why God wants many sons, which means that like we, we all want to know. Oh, I wonder what Jesus looked like. Which is like okay, that's a valid question. There's nothing wrong with that. But God is saying, if you really want to see me. Okay, then then look at a person who has who has mature fruits of the spirit. You're gonna see me. So to to see God, yes, you know God God has has a has a shape. The Bible says we're made in His image, which means He has a head, He has eyes, He has a nose, He has a mouth, He has fingers, and everything that we have. Yes, and 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 one day you will see that His eternal glorious form. We'll see it. But remember that God can shape shift. Okay. So the, what we know that when we see God, and that's what God wants for the world to see Jesus through us and one of his members. So, so literally those fruits is what you should not only pray to God to like grow in your life consistently, not just like put a cap on yourself. You can always grow, but that's how people see Christ in you when you're full of, when, you, when you're full of joy peace, when they see that you, you actually love them, when they see that, that you're patient with them, when they see you're gentle with them, that you're being good with them, that you put, you have faith in them, you, like you're telling them, I believe you can do it, just don't let the enemy tell you that you can't do anything, because the Bible says you can do all things in Christ who strengthens you, so you're putting faith in them and boosting them up, that's what Jesus did. So those fruits of the Spirit, don't just think that, oh, that's the Holy Ghost and His fruits, yes. But that's what God wants to be seen through each one of us. So that's how Christ is seen. So it's not so much like the shape and the color and the eyes or whatever. It's really the fruits of the Spirit. That's how, that's how it's really manifesting. Okay.
and um, yeah. And like I said, reading and reading the Word of God every day and applying it will make sure that your fruits are growing consistently. But through the eyes of God, you can see um, the the fruits. Anybody can see it. See what? I'm, so anybody can see. Like even even an atheist can see that if you if 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 you're full of the joy of the Lord, if if you're meek. If you're patient, if you have temperance, like you don't need spiritual eyes to see that. So, so this message is is called discerning Christ in discerning Christ and all his members. So you need the eyes of God to see in the spirit. But and even an atheist can see that you have joy, that you have peace, that you're patient, that you're loving. Like you, you don't need you don't need special, special eyes. So, so this message is for 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 God wants you to understand that he wants those fruits to be seen through you so that they can see Jesus and fall in love with him and ask you questions. Because when they see those fruits, of course, if they're atheists, they won't know that it's the fruit of the spirit. All they'll know is that that person is supernatural. He does, it's not normal. That person has joy when everybody else around them is, is feeling depressed. When, you know, even when their boss is mean to them, they still have joy and peace. It's not natural. So that will make them already, even though they don't know they're seeing Jesus in you, what all they'll know is like, what's up with them? And, they'll, and then they'll ask you a question, and that's when you told you tell them about Jesus. So, so, so yes, God can give you eyes to see, but but this is very simple. Like even an, an atheist can see this. Even even a dog can see you're full of joy and peace. Okay. So this is not about like a super out of the ordinary thing. This is simply God is saying that's what I want to to people to see through you. Make sense? Yes. Okay. That's the light. Exactly. And the Bible says that Jesus is the, is the light of the world. So that what, what's the light of the world is all those fruits of the Spirit. That's what is giving light to people in the darkness. And people are drawn to the light in the same way that if we shut every light, we're all going to look for a candle or something because we, we don't want to be in the dark. In the very same way, right now the whole world is in the dark. And God wants us to shine. And so the way we know we're shining is if we're allowing those fruits to grow. And, and yes, we can be, uh, like, we can make ourselves to try to be joyful, whatever, but that's not what God wants. He wants the Spirit's joy to flow through us. So worship will do that. Prayer will do that. Reading the Bible and applying it will do that. So pretty much reading the Bible and applying it will do it for sure. But all those other things that you know you should do, that will make it grow much quicker. And and when you when you become a worshiper of God, when you worship, worship God every day, the fruits will just be grow so much because see, the the fruits the, the word of God is seed. The Bible says the word of God is seed, and your heart is the ground. So as long as you put a seed in the ground, okay, and you water it, how do how do how do we water it? Well, when we worship God, God is light. So when we approach God in worship, you know the light is touching the seed. You know the Holy Spirit, the water is is watering the seed. So by worshiping God a lot, you're actually like like watering this, the the ground, um, and 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 receiving the light of Jesus, and, you know. And so you're you're just increasing everything. Is there like a proper order, like what you should do when you pray? I know that you said that we should pray like when we wake up, like in tongues, like pray in tongues at first. Well, like. That's not like you can do whatever the Holy Spirit leads you to do. Like me, I know personally that when I pray in tongues at first, my like I'm connecting with the Holy Spirit because the Bible says when you pray in tongues, that the Holy Spirit through you is praying mysteries to God. So the reason why I pray in tongues first is so I connect to God quickly. So I don't have to just like try to connect with God with my emotions. I just let the Holy Spirit connection like you know it's kind of like you know turning the Wi-Fi on by letting Him roam you know, and then whatever comes. In my in my in my mind from my prayer then I, I begin to speak that so I want him I, so that that way I'm praying the Holy Spirit led prayers I'm not praying what I'm trying to figure out to pray so but if you don't do it like that it's not a sin because you know the Bible shows in the Garden of, of Gethsemane Jesus got on his knees he didn't start to pray in tongue first he just spoke right away so there's no special order but what I told you that I'm praying in tongues first is actually um, getting me in the spirit quicker. Okay. But there's no order that you do it like that or can't do it like that. But I highly recommend to pray in tongues first because it will get you in the spirit quicker. Okay. 
Yes. And we should never measure our spiritual growth by looking at others. As the God told me that that these children are always doing that, and it's very wrong. Number one, you know, we're not all saved at the same time. So some people just had more time to get close to God than you. So if you judge yourself by 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 other Christians without knowing their 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 spiritual background of like when they got saved, what they do, like you'll always be in. Plus, it's not healthy to compete like that. It's not healthy. So God said, never measure. Um, your spiritual success by looking at others he said but by how hungry and thirsty you are for God that's how you know if you're healthy see a person could have been in the church for 20 years they know how to pray amazingly you know like they know the Bible back and forth back and forth okay and a person could have been saved two days ago and but the person who who's hungry for more of God between the two if, if that person that was saved two days ago is hungry for more of God that hunger that hunger says that they're healthy because when you're sick you don't want to eat and and jesus said i'm the bread that came down from heaven he said my flesh is food in, in indeed my 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 blood is drink indeed so and and, and he said you know mention not by bread alone but by every word that comes out of the out, out of the mouth of god so he equated bread with the word of god so that means if a if a person was saved for 20 years they know the bible better than you and everything well, if that person is lukewarm, meaning that they're not hungry for God, like they think they're good, you know, they they got just com they got comfortable in the, in a, in whatever they got. While you were saved two days ago, and you're on and you're all hungry, you want to know more. That person, okay, the Bible equates that 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 person is healthier than this person, much healthier. And and the reason why the Bible says um, in Revelations, Jesus speaks to different churches, and to, and to at least one of them, he says. He says, um, you know, you have many good works, but then he says, but if you don't repent and go back to your first love, meaning like that, that hunger you had when, when you just got saved, he says, if you don't repent and go back to your first love, I will take your candlestick from among you, you know, which means that like you have no more light, the Holy Ghost is gone. So it doesn't matter how old a person is in, in the faith, it matters how hungry are they. So you're not healthy by by how many miracles or, or 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 how much you know the Bible or how good you pray. You're healthy by by being hungry for God. Okay, and God said the reason why that's how you know you're hungry. He said because God is he has no beginning, no end. He's infinitely big. So if your hunger stops saying, "Well, I know enough," like I'm not I'm not that much hungry, then you've just blocked an infinite amount of God that can come into your life. So the way that you know that that you're, you're 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 healthy in your faith is if you are still hungry, and you know depending on the, what's going on in your life, your hunger may go up and down. But if your hunger just like plateaus to that, you're going to church, you're praying, you're worshiping, you're doing all the the the, the, the you, you're doing all the traditional stuff, but in your heart you don't care about learning more, you don't care about the revelation, you don't care about about a word you just want to do your thing you know go to church and then when you get home you know it, it's time for like your your whatever you do and and just like god is compartmentalized in church and not everywhere in your life you know there's a problem but so but he told me the way that you know you're healthy don't look at others to compare yourself he's saying that's exactly what satan wants but but he says make sure you remain hungry for him that's how you know you're healthy. I have a question about yeah. that. I, I'm hungry. <laughs> I know you're hungry. You know that. <laughs> but among Christians, you see light in everybody here. Like, I see a light in Christine. I see a light in you. I see a light in you. I see a light in you and in you. And those are things that you, I would like to have. Um, to give to God I is like that it. a bad thing or it's not to compare it's just to, to to be better for God it's not to compare yourself to him like if I, I look at you for example like I'm amazed that you have such a good memory because I do not have that 
So I, I pray sometimes, God, please give me memory to memorize scriptures and, you know, to to kind of like make links here and there, you know. And but it's not that I'm envious, but it's just that I would like to be able to do the same for him. Yeah, there's nothing wrong because God knows the motive of your heart. So there's nothing, the Bible even says, desire earnestly the gifts. So if that's the gifts you see that you don't have, there's nothing wrong to desire. The Bible says, desire the gifts. But but what this message is saying, at, at this part, it's saying, if you look at me and say that, um, you know, I'm not good because he does this, 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 oh. this, that I, that I can't do, the, like you're already, like that's of Satan and, oh. and you're already falling. But if you say that, okay, like, you know, the Holy Spirit is, and by the way, my, my memory is like for normal, regular things, not about God, I don't have a very good memory. But Jesus said, the Holy Spirit will remind you what I told you, which means I've read the whole Bible. So the Holy Spirit, it, re, it reminds me of whatever I need to know what I'm preaching. See, whenever you need it, he'll remind you. Right now, like, you know, right now you're listening, so it's not really like shooting scriptures at you or maybe scriptures to confirm what you're hearing. But but I've been told before, or oh, like you're so, you're so knowledgeable about the Bible. And, but to be honest with you, it's not because I'm like, oh, I remember like Exodus 5, 10, this, this, this. No, no. I, I, I just hear a, a still small voice saying like the verse and I'm like, yeah, that's what I'm preaching about. So that's because the whole, I have the gift of teaching that, that God gave me. And so the Holy Spirit is feeding that by always remind, remind, um, reminding me the Bible. So because with that gift, it, I need that. But again, if you if you see that and say, oh, like I'm not as good as him because of that, it's already wrong because I have a gift of teaching. Therefore, he's making sure I remember. But if you don't have a gift of, of teaching, then you then you're already like abasing yourself. When instead of doing that, you should, you should, you should just pray. You know, give me the gift of teaching. But so in other words, what you just mentioned in my memory is not it's not even me. It's linked to my gift of teaching. See what I mean? So, okay. so already, like that's a perfect example that that you don't compare yourself to others. Simply tell God, you know, give me the gifts that I need. If there's a gift that I that you want that you don't have, ask God for it. But again, if you look at me and how I'm remembering and compare yourself, no, because God says compare your like make sure you're hungry, but don't compare yourself. But if you want. A gift, the Bible says, like, you should want the gifts. There's nothing wrong with that. But again, if you look at a gift you don't have as, like, your, your lower, it's like, that's of the devil. It's not the truth. As long as, because I, I could be teaching perfectly, but if my hunger is not here and I'm doing, and I'm doing this like a job, then I, I, I need intercession. I'm, I'm not healthy. See what I mean? Like, the Bible, uh, I, I, was, I was listening to um, this person, Mary Kay Baxter, yesterday. I let me to listen to it to her. I've I've already heard testimony about her with going to heaven, but God also showed her hell and and showed gave her scripture about what, what she saw, and and like um, Holy Spirit, help me my, to remember my point. I've got my point on important, so let's go back to the message. So never compare yourself to others of what you don't have. There's nothing wrong to desire spiritual gifts. Bible says you should, and it says that. And the, the the number one you should desire is prophecy because when you prophesy, you edify the church. So the Bible says like the most valuable gift of the spirit is prophecy. So and like I said, the reason why that's the 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 the, the good way to measure your your spiritual health. It's because number one, if you're if you're hungry, you know you're gonna see God and and you want more. But again, God has no beginning, no end. He's, you know, even after a billion years. I mean, God knows how long the angels have been created for the good ones that 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 didn't that didn't fall. You know, they've been they've been here for like whatever millions or billions of years. We don't know. But even everything is in of God now, because God is infinite. It's it's like that. That haven't even scratched the surface. Like when you measure infinity compared to what they've already experienced of God, it's not even a dent. 
So that's why hunger is, is the, the real measure of, of your spiritual health. Because number one, if you don't feed your hunger, you'll just lose interest, first of all. So hunger means you're actually getting fed. But the reason why you're still hungry for more is because whenever you get more of God, there's actually an awe and you want more. Even people who've been to heaven and I've seen God, you know, and, and you know, I've had, I've, I've had that, that grace by God, he took me to heaven and I've seen God on the throne. It's like, it's so intense, it's so amazing. But the first thing you notice when you're, when you're back to your normal self is like, I want more, I want to go back there for more. So if, just seeing God, you know, for the first time, like with your own eyes in heaven, okay, it's not like, okay, now I've seen God and I'm cool. No, the second you're out of there, what people have said constantly, and that's why I know they've really been there and seen it, is we all say the same thing. The second I had to go, I wanted to run back there. And, 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 and they actually say, when I'm there, I could, I could actually stay there forever looking at him. And then they say, and I'm worshiping him and they say, and, and it was so glorious, so amazing beyond words that they say, like, I could worship him forever. And, and, and they mean it. They, like they, they say, I could, I could stay there and worship him for a million years and still want to stay there. That's actually how um, intense it is to see God. And so that's why God said, the way you actually know you're healthy is if you're still hungry for him. Because he, you know, there's no such thing with God as like full filling to the point of not wanting more of God. No, that's, God is infinite. There's always more of him. So, next point. Yeah, so I already told you how God said that uh, every foot of the spirit is a feature of his invisible face. And that's how we can all be seen in all of us. It's not about a physical appearance, it's about the, the, the nature of God and, and the nature he created us to have is his own nature and, and likeness. The likeness is our physical form, so we kind of all look like him physically. But, but the nature is like the character of God, it's the fruits of the Spirit. So, the richer your fruits become, the better Jesus is seen in you. And that's what God wants. He wants Jesus to be seen in all of us and that is like the biggest one of the biggest way you can evangelize people okay you can tell them about jesus which you should but right. af but after you've told them about jesus if they actually if, if they know you they will they will put put you under the microscope and look at you just to say that oh you know i don't want god because you're like that no i don't want your god so <laughs> that's how people are okay they like when you tell them about Jesus, the first thing they're gonna do is look at your life and 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 like they, they'll even remember scripture to say, Oh, you're not like that what I read, like you know. And then because the thing about the thing about God is that people know the Bible says that by the things that were created, meaning nature, that it's impossible like that just by looking at nature, God says that on judgment day, nobody can say, I didn't know you exist because I didn't see you. The Bible says nature itself proves there's a god so when people say oh you know scientists love to say this there's no there's no way to prove that god exists and there's no way to disprove that he exists so let's just agree to, agree to disagree and by the way i have my i i have my um survival of the fittest document by by what whatever his name is and what what is your proof like we have this and this and this and then they laugh at you and then they but they always they always love to end with like well you know what there's no way to there's no way i can prove to you it doesn't exist Yes, and there's no way you can prove to me that he exists, but, and, and most Christians, most Christians go like, well, yeah, okay, let's just agree to disagree. No, the Bible says creation proves he exists, okay? And I'll just give you a very simple example that you, you could tell people who bring science to you, okay? They, they believe in a Big Bang. Well, scientifically speaking, an explosion, if I explode my phone right now, is it going to make any harmony, any sense? No. An explosion is destructive by nature and within laws of physics make it so it doesn't change you know you know within the laws of physics an explosion destroys okay an explosion has never brought anything together okay so within the very confines of physics it is a, a very ridiculous statement to say to say that like you know uh you know planets in orbits which is order you know, uh, like the the human anatomy, which is order, DNA, which is more 
complex than any human language came from an explosion, it makes no sense because you have to you have to keep everything within the laws of physics and an explosion destroys. It brings nothing together. So so already that's an example of how the nature itself proved as a God because everything is nature is so ordered. There's a different DNA code for human beings, a different one, a different one for every different animal. And, and, and again, DNA is more complex than English, than French, than any language that was ever created. And scientists know that to, to the point that by, by changing things in DNA, they can like grow like, you know, monster animals that, that, that were not meant to exist. That's how much, that's how much DNA is so precise of a language. Okay. And, and so therefore, just like God said in the Bible, that nature proves he exists in, in the same way that that you know an explosion can only reproduce you know after its own kind like god said everything reproduces after, it, after its own kind so therefore the reason why there's so much order in creation is because god is the being of order therefore his creation reflects ref, the creation reflects the creator there's order in creation meaning that that there must be order in a creator and that because the and and and, and again if 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 uh, if they tell you that well there, there's order in nature, but how can you say there's a God because of it? Well, okay, forget God. Just say because there's order in nature, it's it screams design. Therefore, okay, you don't like the word God, but that it it demands a designer because there's a design. It demands a designer. So again, the Bible already told us that nature itself makes it so on Judgment Day. Anybody who tells God, "I never saw you, so I didn't believe what I didn't see," God will say next, <laughs> you know. So that won't be that won't be valid. So don't be intimidated by 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 scientists who try to bring all these clever arguments. Just say, uh, listen, the laws of physics dictate that an explosion destroys things. It it, it will never bring anything together. Okay, and right there, and, and I'm telling you from experience, I've I've said the same thing to to people who brought science to me, and they were they always said like they always kind of like they had no comeback to that. Okay, but anyways, the point is not to have a scientific debate. My point here is that the Bible does say that nature proves God. Okay, so the more the more Christ is seen in us, the more people will be drawn to God and be saved. Essentially, the reason why uh, God wants Jesus to be seen in every one of His children is because, in the same way that people saw Jesus when He was on the earth. They were attracted to him because, you know, he was not affected by the same things that they were affected. There was, there was even virtue coming out of him. And by the way, um, the, like the word, the Bible, there's a point in the Bible where a woman with an issue of blood touched Jesus. And Jesus said, you touched me because I felt virtue come out of me. So see, all these things in, in the, uh, the fruits of the spirit, love, joy, peace, meekness, th those are virtues. So the richer the, the fruit of the Spirit in you, okay, the more even healing power will, will manifest. And in my own life, I've seen it because um, I've seen that when, I, when I'm really, when, I, when I'm so in the Spirit that I can really feel the joy of God really strong in me, the peace and like all the fruits, that's usually the times when I pray for people that, that like they got healing, that, that they got healing. And even, even lately, I, I really feel the fruits of the, of the spirit very strong in me, and, and and that's and that and God showed me that the fact about virtue, how how the word virtue literally means like like those things we read in the fruits, they are virtues. So which means that when the woman touched Jesus, it was those fruits that were so rich in him that was healing the people. In other words, um, and also God just reminded me of a, of a vision I saw, and uh, it was a while ago, and. In a vision, I was standing in this very narrow river, and it wasn't deep, but it was very narrow. And on, and on my left side and on my right side, it was a very thick, heavenly-looking uh, forest. And then the river was maybe like like to my here to my legs, and it was rushing in front of me like that. And and I, I just felt so much anointing. And then when I came out of the vision, God said that that the river represents, um, you know, pretty much the fruits of the spirit. And then he says, when they flow naturally like that, he says, that's how people will get healed when you pray for them. So, so he just reminded me of that vision I forgot about. So in other words, the, the richer those fruits are in you, the healing will just flow. 
because though, because the same virtue that came out of Jesus did to heal the woman from the, the issue of blood were the fruits of the Spirit. But that was the virtue flowing out of him all the time. So, any questions? That's the message. So, in, in essence, God desires us to reflect Jesus. The way that we tangibly measure that is by the fruits of the Spirit increasing in us. The way that we increase the fruits of the Spirit is by reading and obeying the Word of God. And the Word of God has every instructions on what to do with, with God anyway. And the more those fruits become rich in us, the more even the miraculous will happen in our lives. And, and the Bible says, for this reason was Christ manifest to destroy the works of the devil. So God wants us strong in those fruits so that Christ can, through us, destroy whatever we encounter of the devil and set people free. Amen. That's the message. Amen.